All right, so let's get into some action here. We have a Wednesday. Now, this is a weird week because we don't have a lot of price action due to economic news. There is a little bit here and there, but we're not talking big inflationary numbers. We're also not talking about Federal Reserve commentary or decisions. So it's a little bit of what I would refer to as a hangover week. A hangover week means that basically you're in a situation where there's a lot of action the previous week and everyone is basically, they were drunk on action, right? I mean, it's essentially, that's the, that's the kind of analogy where this week we're like, okay, there's not a lot of action. And what you can see is you can see the price action. It's slower. This week, the bank stocks aren't going crazy. The volume on the S&P is quiet. Even crypto, I mean, a little bit of a pop today, which we're going to talk about in just one second, but even crypto has been a little bit quiet for the last few days or so. So again, that's what we call a hangover week when people are kind of uh, calm and, and a little bit less agitated. All right. So bottom line is here, Let's go into some charts. I want to start with the crypto charts because I know everyone's waiting for those. We want to look at that. It's actually one of the few things out there that's moving big today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip us into the crypto chart. This is the Bitcoin chart. We are having a nice pop on Bitcoin today. Bitcoin trading up about 4.4% on the morning session, almost $1,200 from this time yesterday. Now, one thing to note here, take a look. Basically, what we're looking at is a level of support right here, right? So you, you just very defined, and this is the beauty of charts. It kind of guides you to support and resistance. Notice how the lows right through here are all together at this 26,700 level. That's a very obvious support level. Notice how the highs right here are all at the 28,700 level. That's resistance. Look at the high of today. It was close to 28,700 on Bitcoin. So what this is telling me, and number one, where do I get that resistance from, by the way, because this is just cool stuff. But look at this low pivot here from the bull market dip in 2021. It is exactly at that price point, 28,700. So essentially what we're looking at here is that becomes resistance. That's why price is having so much trouble getting through this level. Gareth views the current state of the markets as an opportunity to prepare and position himself for the upcoming changes, despite the fact that the markets got off to a poor start this week. Unlike the previous two weeks, Gareth has included everything you require within this action-packed game plan in light of the fact that Bitcoin is currently trading in a zone of resistance that is crucial and that stock markets have been struggling to get going this week. In today's video, expert in the field Richard Hart will discuss Bitcoin, how to get started with HEX and how to invest in it and the tactics investors should employ. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Master in DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. The future value of Bitcoin is forecast by Gareth Soloway, using technical analysis of market data with the help of charts. Now, again, what you're essentially we're doing here is we're playing pinball. All right. Meaning meaning you're bouncing here, you're hitting off here, you're pulling back, you're going back and forth. And essentially what that tells us is that the more we hit one way, the weaker it becomes. So the more we hit to the upside, there is a chance that we could break up. I've said that for a while. I said, listen, there's a chance we could break above this twenty eight thousand seven hundred level. The problem is upside is limited to about thirty thousand to thirty thousand five hundred. Again, that takes us back to this major consolidation area right here as well as all of this over here, even pre bull market run up to 60,000, where we then pulled back or 65, then we went to 69 and pulled back. That's that area right in there. All right. So again, the way I'm viewing this, the way I'm trading this, I have a tiny position short Bitcoin at 28,450. I will be adding to that at 30,000 Pierce, essentially. That puts me in a position to be short close to the 30,000 level. If we get above 30,000 and we stay there for a certain amount of time, like a time count, then I cover my shorts. All right. So this is a very calculated trade with a specific risk to the trade.
right? And that's what it's all about, folks, is that in general, we want to know what's our end game. When does our thesis fail? And that's what we're doing in this chart. That's how I'm analyzing this chart. Gareth, with the help of charts, predict the Ethereum price where it is headed. All right, next up, let's take a look at Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is kind of interesting here because you're in this upsloping channel and it's a great upsloping channel. You connect these lows. That's exactly where we hit right over here. You go from these highs and it goes right on that same incline. Notice the blue lines are parallel. All right. So what this tells us is this is a lot of resistance right here around this this 1850 level. All right. If 1850 does break and if we get above here, there's a run up to 2000. Now, why is 2000 very key? All right. The reason 2000 is key on Ethereum is because it was the highest point right here since the lowest point was put in on Ethereum back in June of 2022. So again, the lowest point was put in in June of 2022. The highest point since then was in August of 2022. That's again, the upside potential. That's where, that's where Ethereum will meet resistance. Would I be a shorter there? I would. The reason I would be a shorter there is because I'm the type of trader that makes a level break Otherwise, if it doesn't break in its resistance, then it's then the probabilities are dictating a pullback. So it's all about probabilities. There's no there's no, oh, I'm always bearish. There's no, oh, I'm always bullish. There's none of that BS in this chart or in any charts that I look at. It's about specific levels. And as soon as you understand that, you become free. You become free to understand that, again, it's all about the odds. You become the casino. You are no longer the gambler. And that's what it is. It doesn't mean I win on every trade. Heck, I put out a video yesterday. I lost 99% on SBNY because the Fed halted it. The government halted that stock. I was in that stock at the time. And it basically opened yesterday at like, I think I sold it at 58 cents. So again, I lost 99% of that trade. I'm not perfect. No one is. But the key is how much did I have invested in that trade? 1% of my portfolio. If you have $100,000 yesterday, you would have had 99,000. In addition, we closed at an Alibaba trade, 3.6% of our portfolio. Boom, we made back almost 50% of that loss right there. So it's all about position sizing. For those of you that are new out there and you guys are focused in and, and thinking to yourself, oh, okay, um, think about this, right? You know, I have to make a million dollars overnight or I have to make it by the end of this year. That's the mentality that will make you go broke. Always remember that, guys. It's singles and doubles. You want to get to the Hall of Fame as an investor hitting singles and doubles. You know why? Because ultimately to hit home runs means you're going to strike out. And when you strike out in trading, that means you lose a big amount of money. And that is unacceptable. That kills your account. It basically puts you back to the starting point, And it is not good for your overall health and your financial wealth. Gareth is able to forecast the price of gold using charts. Gold gold today is pulling back just a little bit. And by the way, I do have some trades coming up I'm going to give you guys, so stay tuned for that. Um, don't forget to like this stream, share this stream. I want literally every time I log in and do these lives, I want 100,000 people watching live and another 900,000 watching afterwards. So I need your help. Share it. Give it to your friends and family. Help them benefit from the key words and the key analysis that I do. All right, so let's take a look right here at gold. Gold's pulling back. Now, gold's had a great run. There's nothing to take away from gold here. You guys know I continue to be a huge bull on gold, but we are short-term extended here. We might need to consolidate a little bit more. After consolidation, is gold going higher? Absolutely. You're looking at a double top coming up. That's your next target at 2075. So essentially what I would say to you, or what I'm saying to myself is that I am buying pullbacks. If we get a pullback in gold, I'm a buyer of gold. The chart is an amazing bullish. Look at this sideways bullish consolidation for the last two plus years, the last three years. That is amazing. Last year in 22, 22, everyone was like, oh, you know, gold is coming down here. It's not performing like Gareth said. By the way, it still beat the S&P and, and Bitcoin by a mile. But the key was look at the dollar. The dollar was up 20%. 20% on the dollar and gold was down for the year, maybe 5%. That tells you huge accumulation. In fact, I did, I did interviews where I said, guys, when, when the dollar is up 20% and gold doesn't decline by 20%, it tells you big money is buying. Don't be a fool. Follow the big money. There's a reason why big money is big money. It's because they know what the heck they're doing. And so ultimately, that's the key. And now we see this big move up this year. Look for it to attack 2075. My target for the end of this year is well north 
of 2075 should be again potentially $2300 once we break out above 2075 that's your play look to buy miners on pullbacks the miners will do really well this year because inflation is coming down last year inflation was 9% and you know what sucked for the miners the fact that we saw inflation high and gold price was not going up so they were basically making the same or less on selling their gold that they were mining but all their costs were up precipitously that was a bad recipe. That's why the miners underperformed. Take a look at the GDX here. Getting started with Hex is much simpler than ever before. As Richard Hart explains. Hard. It's hard. <laughs> and that's why there's more opportunity. You know, when it's easy, you're not going to get the same gains. Yeah. When, when, when everyone's done it, you're not going to get the same gains. You know, a, a large part of the profit and speculation is getting into something before someone else. Does. Oh, yes. So Bitcoin guys. Bitcoin guys get this backwards. They go, there's no liquidity. You're like, oh, really? That's funny. Because when was the best time to buy Bitcoin? When Satoshi owned 100% of the coins, when there was no liquidity, there was only one exchange you could buy from, Mt. Gox, which means Magic the Gathering online exchange, which is just a card game. It's literally a card game kids play, Magic the Gathering. The URL, Mt. Gox, literally meant card trading website. <laughs> but they just <laughs> used the URL for a, a Bitcoin trading website instead. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, you know, and when and when did Bitcoin's price go up the most? When it had the highest inflation. Yep. And and it had the most centralized ownership and the least liquidity. But people get it all backwards, and they look at opportunity in the face and they're like, you know, Hex is so small. There's only three hundred thousand uh, people that could possibly hold Hex. There's only three hundred thousand wallets. I think there's three hundred thirty thousand. Um, you're like, yeah, that's awesome. That's called opportunity. And when everyone has a wallet, there will be a lot less opportunity. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like when it's easy to buy, there will be a lot less opportunity. <laughs> You want to get in while it's hard to buy. Um, so basically, like all, the majority of hex trading is on chain. So you can really there's the the minimum amount of fake crap. These are you can see who's buying, who's selling, whether they staked, how long they staked for, whether they usually sell when their stakes are over, whether they restake, what other coins they like. You can see this all. It's on chain. They don't know the person's identity, but you know the address. Yeah. Right? So it's pseudo anonymous. <clears throat> so in, in hex, you would just buy Bitcoin. Or I'm sorry, do not buy Bitcoin. <laughs> try. Um, you would either buy yeah. Either buy Ethereum or USDC and a little bit of Ethereum. And then you could go to oneinch.io or matcha.xyz or ethhex.com and just swap them on chain. So you install MetaMask, you go to your exchange, you buy the coins, you put them in your MetaMask, and then you go to the website, you connect your MetaMask and swap them. And that, that last part's the beautiful part because no, there's no counterparty risk. When you leave your coins in an exchange, they could disappear. They can never give you your coins again. So if you do use an exchange, I like to trickle the money in. Here's a little bit of money. Give me my stuff. Here's a little more money. Give me my stuff. Okay, have some more. Give me my stuff. Don't ever put it all in. And then, oh, oh, I can't have my stuff now. You want me to beg you? You want me to write you some essays about my life history? And they do this. They do this all the time. So you limit your counterparty risk with the exchange by doing multiple transactions. And then you put it in your wallet. Now you're in control. And now you can't get screwed by your exchange. You know, there's no counterparty risk. This is what cryptocurrency was invented for. And it's also what gives you all the gains. How many people out there tried to start businesses and outperform Bitcoin? Even people that started Bitcoin businesses didn't outperform Bitcoin. Just holding the coins beat all the businesses. You, then every, every dollar you pay a developer, you didn't buy a coin with. Every dollar you pay to go to a trade show, you didn't buy a coin with. And then you look at these coins that have gone up 10,000x like Hex did. And you're like, dang, I wish I had uh, <laughs> bought the coins, you know? Richard Hart explains the strategies adopted by crypto investors. And, and you know, it's people don't realize that like, so I'll just, I'll, I'll give you the greatest hits of stupid yes, things people yes. think that they okay. say. So people say, uh, Bitcoin's a Ponzi because where does the money come from? It's just someone else's money. That's a cool story. Cool story, bro. So when you, when you sell your house for more, where did that money come from? Magic. <laughs> the next guy. Yes, exactly. And when you sell your stock for more, where did it yeah, come the from? Next the guy. next guy. And when you're in business and you want to sell your next cheeseburger, where's the money come exactly. from? The next yeah. guy. And so all of life is the next guy even like literally life like you're having kids and they are the next guy and if they don't have kids it all the game all stops so every speculative instrument has this property that if everyone sells at once it goes to yep. zero and that if people stop buying the price goes down it's very simple and i just don't understand how they come up with such stupid arguments when the highest performing asset class that's ever existed is crypto bitcoin went up 690 million percent that's 69,000 X. I think it's more. Yeah. 
Wow. I think it's 6,900x, actually. Amazing numbers. And yeah, and it did that in only a decade. Go like and then put it versus anything else that's ever existed in the history of man. They they try and compare it to the tulip bubble. <laughs> that thing came and went, and you never yep, saw it again. Right. They try and compare it to the South Seas bubble. It came and went, and you never yep. saw it again. Bitcoin keeps making higher highs. Good try. Now, I will tell you, it's the top of its S curve. People think they're early in Bitcoin when it's 13 years old. Nope, you're not early. You're late. You're last. The world's richest guy already bought and dumped on your head. <laughs> Elon Musk already bought. Said he wouldn't sell and then sold yes. <laughs> on you. It's exactly what he did. He said he'd accept it for Tesla cars and then he wouldn't. He said, oh, it uses electricity. I'm a rocket scientist, but who knew? <laughs> Bitcoin uses electricity. Crazy. <laughs> That's hilarious. So does the Tesla. I think he even has a computer science degree, too. You're like, you know, oh, right. Yeah, true. And then um, so it's it's just wild to me. You know, it's funny, actually. I'll bet you as a percentage of electricity used, Bitcoin mining at 75 percent renewable is a higher renewable electricity consumption than Tesla cars yep. themselves, which is interesting. <laughs> um, just thought of it. <laughs> That's so, a yeah. it's true. It's a good, it is. It's a good point. <laughs> thought, thought leadership. Um, so what are other things people say? Well, so first in, in Bitcoin, you really are, in my opinion, buying the top of the S curve. Things are stealth and then the early adopters get them and then everyone gets them and then they trail yeah. off. And then some things die. I'm not sure Bitcoin will do the dying thing. Like the cassette tape died. The CD died. The record died. MP3s are still doing fine. And so all of those technologies had S curves and Bitcoin is at the top of its. You're the last guy to buy. And there's no technical innovation. There's no roadmap. There's no privacy. There's no NFTs. There's no time deposits, which is hex.com. There's no uh, stable coins. There's no ability to trade with someone else with no middlemen, no counterparty risk. There's no, you know, like it just is trash yeah. it's slow expensive no roadmap garbage what do you think of these crypto market experts majority opinion tell us in the comments we hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey be sure to check out our crypto brand called cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content till next time goodbye